We're back. What's Cooking Wednesday? Uh, it has been a heck of a summer, a little hot. It's cooling down. We thought we had the time running right on this, and now it's like 90 degrees again today. So uh, you get to watch the fat guy sweat and make tacos, but we're making tacos. So here's what we're doing today. We are going to be rocking what we're calling the red tacos. Now, it's not a traditional red taco where you're using the beef consomme, but I'll tell you why we're calling it red, because we have been marinating for the last half hour in Bloody Point Bloody Mary Mix. This stuff is phenomenal. We sell it here at Hasty Bake at the Tulsa Grill Store. It's got no high fructose corn syrup or junk like that in it. Matter of fact, I'm looking right now. First ingredient, water, tomato paste, distilled vinegar. It's good stuff. If you like Bloody Marys, pick it up. If you like to marinate stuff, pick it up. But that is not the only thing we're doing with it. So I'm going to show you how we're doing this. This is skirt steak. Like I said, we are making tacos today. So we've been marinating that tomato, that vinegar, nice acid. It's going to create a really good base for us on these tacos. But we're going to go a step further. Two of my absolute favorite seasonings right now are made by Poncho and Lefty Steaks, P&L Steaks. This is their fajita rub, and this is their Red River beef rub. I'm hearing some crackling on my fire. Shut that down just a touch. So we're going to be hitting with these. Red River beef rub is a wonderful rub. Uh, it's kind of got a hot sauce flavor to it, not spicy, but a lot of peppers to it. Uh, and it leaves some wonderful color. And then some good fajita mix. It's got some salt in it, some kind of the traditional fajita seasonings. So we're going to get a generous hit of that Red River beef rub. P&L seasonings we also carry here at the Tulsa Grill Store. They're smoking hot on the SCA trail. We have their beef steak marinade. We have their Terra Lingua AP, their Red River beef and their fajita mix. We absolutely love their stuff. So here's that, getting this fajita mix in there too. That's kind of your traditional fajita flavors if you're used to using, you know, some bolners or something like that. This will kind of give you a little bit of that flavor to it. I think it's a lot better personally. Flip these over, hit the other sides. We're not going exact with it. We're not going super fancy with it, one. We're not in competition, and two, we're just making tacos. Tacos on a Wednesday. Again, this is skirt steak. It is my absolute favorite steak to use for fajitas. It's got a great fat content to it, super juicy. It's thick enough that you can kind of keep from over temping it, undercooking, overcooking it. It's got a really pronounced grain, so it's easy to slice. There we go. Rub that in there. Let that sit for one minute while we come over here. We make sure the grill's getting hot. So we're smoking at a good 450 degrees, which is where we want. We want a real nice hot fire when I put these things on. Hit that thing with just a little bit of duck fat. Make sure those grates don't stick. Come back over here with our skirt steak. Lay it on real hot. Now we are using the Haste to Bake Legacy 132 today, our stainless model. Handles heat very, very well. Does what the majority of our Hasty Bakes do, which is being able to get that fire right up against the grate where your meat is. So we're gonna get a really nice, beautiful sear on these steaks. My plan for this is here, because this is only going to be about a three or four minute cook on these, is we're going to let it go for about a minute aside, hit it with a little bit of duck fat just to brown it, flip it, and we're going to do the old Jess Pryles, just keep flipping method, going to keep these things going back and forth, back and forth, and we till, till we feel like they're done, that gives a good even cook on both sides. You don't cook on just one, kind of have it come through. You get a nice cook all the way out on the outside. Now the goal on skirt steak when you're making tacos, you got to keep these things medium rare. So. If they're thick enough, you can put a thermopen in them. You're shooting for a temp of about 130, 132, 135 on the high side. They will rise a little bit when we rest them. Uh, if they're thin enough, you kind of just got to go by feel. Not too hard. You'll get there. But we do kind of want to just keep these things moving. Already getting some beautiful browning on the bottom. Like I said, that fire was 450 degrees. 
and the coals are about five inches below it. So they are going to cook quick. Get a nice zoom in on what that flavor, what that seasoning's doing. That Red River beef is hitting really good. That fajita seasoning's getting some of the salt in there. Now, along with that Bloody Mary mix that we put in there, I did put some lime juice in it, so it has a little bit extra citrus flavor to it. But that Bloody Mary mix is really going to add a lot of color, getting a lot of tenderness, get a little bit of a tomato paste, which you're kind of familiar with with Mexican food. Ah, look at this right here. Jennifer, zoom in. What's going on right there? See that caramelization? Ah, I'll get the sun out of there. That's where the money is. All right, so here's the plan. We're going to hit these with some duck fat just to get them a little oily and flip again. Now we have done tacos before on what's cooking Wednesday and a lot of times we'll end up doing it caveman style. Today I'm just showing you on the grate. Have any questions so far? Nope. It's good to be back. It's good to be cooking again been a busy season we had scratch and dent we had summer hitting us real hard stores been popping all summer long it's been wonderful but I'm ready to get back into the kitchen as you can tell as I'm wiping sweat out of my eyes probably should have started this next week when it's going to be 70 but we'll roll with it hit this again and just keep flipping Now the nice thing when you do end up using the grate is you're not developing any cold spots when you flip because your grate stays hot the whole time. About the third or fourth flip you want to kind of start feeling. Still got a little ways to go on those. While those are rolling over there on the semi-cool side, it's going to throw some tortillas down, start warming those puppies up. We also chopped up some cilantro and some onion today. We got some lime juice. So we are fixing to have a taco Wednesday. Normally, if I wasn't talking to you, I'd be counting on this stuff. I normally go about 30, 40 seconds at the most before I flip again. It sounds excessive. But it really builds a good crust. Yeah, you're knocking some seasoning off when you flip. Feel free to season liberally. Or if you're like me, just throw some more on in the middle of the cook. Not going to hurt anything. Especially when you got a really good seasoning like that Red River beef. trying to figure out what to cook for you guys today and I've just been on a taco kick these last few weeks we did some chuck roast this last weekend we marinated it actually in that Red River beef and that fajita rub marinated it in that put it slow smoked it for about two hours and put that stuff in a pot and braised it broke it down shredded it into shredded beef like a barbacoa it was absolutely phenomenal so I've been eating tacos every day can't complain there's worse Worst foods to eat on a daily basis. Woo! We're getting close on these. This one's a little bit thicker in the back. Bring those coals up a little higher. Really start to get that sear. That's the benefit, guys. When you can raise and lower your firebox on these Hasty Bakes, you know, unlike other grills that are out there, where you have a fixed flame position and you got to put your fire in right the first time because you can't move it around. On these, you got all the playability you need to be able to kind of raise and lower that stuff. It's cooking too fast, lower that firebox down. It's cooking too slow, raise that firebox up. You want to get that final sear, that final char on it. Get that fire up. That is the final char I'm looking for right there. You like that sizzle. Uh, 
Almost done. Probably got one more flip in it. Last little bit of that duck fat. Hey Kevin, John, what's going on guys? Just making some tacos. Kevin Snell knows a little bit about making tacos. I think we're gonna get him over here in the next couple weeks. Gotta give him a break on a Wednesday and give him a break from making tacos to come on over and make some tacos. Yeah, I'm gonna call that good. Ladies and gentlemen, that, some good looking skirt steak. If you're in the Tulsa area and you have not tried Kevin Snell's tacos, you need to spend some time over at Taqueria Escondido. Over in the, uh, I guess it's called the Brewery District is what we're calling it now. It's, uh, what is it, 6th and Utica-ish. It's got some of the best tacos in town. A little different than your traditional street taco, Mexican street tacos, but absolutely phenomenal stuff. So we're going to let these things rest for another minute. I'll just kind of give you a little idea of what we did. So to recap, we started off with some really good skirt steak, trimmed off any kind of overhanging fat that was on that skirt steak, got, got, got them all squared up. Because what you really want when you're cooking like that is you want consistency. You don't want one side that's way too thin, one side that's way too thick. If it's real thick, you can open it up and butterfly it up. But the goal is for that thing to cook well all the way through. Here's the little trick with skirt steak. It's a real, real nice little benefit is once you dice that skirt steak up and you kind of mix everything up, all your odds and ends, your medium rare pieces, some pieces that are a little overdone, you mix them all up, you're not going to taste them differently in a taco because they're all mixed up together. So it is pretty forgiving. But we took a good piece of skirt steak, we marinated it in that Bloody Point, Bloody Mary mix. We sell this at the store. I think we got it on sale right now too. So $7 a bottle, something like that. Uh, so stock up on that stuff, give it a good shake, get everything mixed up and and marinate there and then we put some lime juice in it too left it out here for about 20-25 minutes let that vinegar and that tomato go to work brought it out hit it with red river beef rub and fajita rub threw it on the grill real nice and hot just keep flipping the jkf method is uh thank you jess prowse for teaching us that because that's a wonderful method to do especially on thin cuts where you want to make sure you're not overcooking and you want to get it really consistent heated up those tortillas as well Diced up some onion, diced up some cilantro. Still got some lime we're gonna hit. Show you guys how we're going to cut this. Now this, this is where you can ruin it. So I guess you're gonna warn you ahead of time. The goal is you wanna cut this stuff against the grain. Now, it's a big cut of meat. So I like to cut them in half before I start handling them. Just make them a little easier to handle. And what I do with this is your grain is running this way. You can see it pretty clear when you pull it. You can see all those lines, that's your grain. So you want to cut it against the grain when you're making your cuts. And by cutting it against the grain, you're breaking up all those fibers and you're going to guarantee a nice tender piece of meat. I'm a little out of practice with What's Cooking Wednesday because I forgot my good glove liners, which guarantee that I don't burn the crap out of my fingers. But there's that. Then once I cut them that way, this is where I come back and I dice that steak the other way. Get those beautiful cubes that we know in carne asada. Bring back the other piece. We're gonna do the same thing here. Look at those lines for that grain. So we're gonna cut against it. Now again, if you're temping these, which I always recommend you temp. I didn't grab my thermopen today. But if you are temping these, pull them off around 132, let them rest. They're gonna be nice and tender and juicy, but they are, again, forgiving because it's skirt steak. There's quite a bit of fat in skirt steak. We'll come back along here, cut up our tubes into cubes. You see all this marinade, all that rub that's on that steak, making a nice little board sauce underneath you here. It's like I miss cubing that piece. Once it's all said and done, guys, 
I'm going to go ahead and grab these tortillas and pile on some steak. A little bit of white onion or pickled red onion is another favorite of mine. A little bit of cilantro. A little bit of lime because you got to have that acid in there. And there's your street tacos. Now that took us, I don't know, maybe all of 12, 15 minutes to do. This stuff is absolutely wonderful. Use it for tacos, use it for burritos, put it over rice, whatever you want to do with it. It's a great meal just to grab and cook really fast on a weeknight for the family. You can cook a lot of it. Skirt steak isn't overly expensive. And when you have something like that marinade and that really good seasoning, you're going to guarantee it's going to be a killer taco every single time. So uh, we're going to pound these tacos. Thanks for watching. Join us. We're going to try to get back a little bit more regularly on Wednesdays and get these things pumped out to you guys. So you got questions, you got ideas, please forward them out to us. We'll do our best to answer them and also to get you the content you want. Until next time, I'm pounding a taco. See you soon.